Welcome back Cloud Cadets. In this video we'll explore how to set up uh, our local repository and our remote repository, how to git clone it, uh, the easiest ways first, and later on we'll explore uh, other approaches uh, for those that perhaps are not using Visual Studio. But first let's go to our repos. And uh, I'm already in the test repo, but if you weren't you can go there. Um, right now I want to show you what happens if we created a, re a repository first on the remote and how we can get it to our local machine and keep them synced. So, first let's open Visual Studio. Uh, and we see when we open this first up, we have an option here called Clone Repository. If I click there, it will take me to the next step, which will look like this. And we'll get back to this in a second. I wanna show you the other approach because you might not have your account added yet. Uh, maybe your work account, your personal account, your educational account. So I'm going to go here, continue with that code. And uh, you can see that I'm already logged in into my account, but you might not have been, and that might not have been, you might not have been able to click here and add another account from here. So there's another place. If you go up here to file and there's account settings and here we can add an account. And here you could choose work, school, or personal account or a GitHub account. Uh, and now I'm going to use my student account. Uh, and we see that I can get to that same place we did in that first part before we opened Visual Studio in the, what do you call it, like a launcher uh, window. If I click here, Git, and I could press on this clone repository. And here, we're in the same window. So in the both options, we click on Azure DevOps, and we can choose the account that we're logged into. We see that... Uh, I'm already logged in and I've already selected the one that I'm going to be used and we can see those repos we had. We have a default one for that sandbox we created by default that was uh, quite boring and then we have the cloud cadets where we have the test repo and cloud cadets. So I'm going to choose the test repo and I'm going to put it to desktop. I don't like that uh, place, that dark lonely place. Uh, let's see. Why? Why MCA? Where's this club? I'm really blind today. Where's the stop? Oh, there. Okay. Well, you learned something new. And here we can see the different options. We're just going to go clone. Uh, it already exists. So I'm going to give it a name then dependent on that. You could have chosen a folder that you already created, but uh, I'm going to call it test repo. Uh, and then this one will create a folder for me automatically. And here we can, we can get to this part where it might want you to log in for the first time because it wants to connect. It will send the Git files with it so they're in sync. So now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to add my new account and uh, let me open my secret files somewhere and get the access. And let's see a moment. Then we copy this. And then we copy the password. And now it works. There we go. The project is open and it's empty and it's boring. Uh, there's nothing here. Uh, but at least now we see that it works and we could uh, open a terminal. Let's see, how do you Visual Studio people do this? There we go, command line. Let's open a developer command prompt, I guess. Oh, nice. All right, and then we can see git status and it's connected with our branch. And uh, this is one way of doing this uh, and we can just check uh, that everything works um git checkout be dev on a created dev branch and now i can verify that it's there and now i wish to push it to the origin uh, Git push origin dev uh, and we might want to set the default upstream so we don't need to type this every time and now we have sent it and we can go back to our browser and we can refresh and we see we have a main branch and a dev branch. So I could go here and we have that. Uh, and we see the author there, that's me. 
so we can track each other. So that's one way of doing it. Um, you might be doing this for simpler projects uh, like uh, Python, uh, JavaScript and that. But it's for other people that using Visual Studio, you might not like this approach. So let's do it differently. Uh, since we, this is a project-based uh, video series, we're going to create a front-end and a back-end. So I'm going to start with the back-end. Uh, I'm going to not add a readme and no git ignore. And let's call it Cloud Cadets Backend. Great. And now uh, I'm going to move this to the left here. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close Visual Studio. I'm going to open Visual Studio again. I'm going to create a new project. And for our backend, we will use a uh, .NET Core Web API. Uh, if you don't have a recent project here, you can come to this filter, select the API, and you will find it here. And this is the one we are going to continue with. And here we are uh, going to call the project uh, Cloud Cadets API. Uh, or it's called Backend. And the solution name, I don't want it to have backend in the name. I'll keep it simple. And I'm going to show a different approach later, uh, which I prefer, but to be inclusive, I'm going to show this one. Um, and it already by default will uh, select the desktop and we can see the project will be created in desktop, Cloud Cadets, which is the solution name. So it will have a folder and then the project will be inside in a project named Cloud Cadets Backend. Uh, and we click next. We can stick with the defaults, uh, configure for HTTPS. I don't want to use controllers, so I'm going to go with minimal API. Otherwise, uh, uh, no need for authentication, dot detate. Great. There we go. And uh, now here we have our project. You can see all of this. It works, good. Uh, go to tools. Come to the command line. Let's open a developer command prompt. The nice thing here is that it opens us in the root folder, the solution folder. So if I press ls list, uh, I'm right. This doesn't work on uh, here. Let's open this one instead. Ls. All right. In Windows we say dir. Oh, let's go back to the original one then. Let's press dir, and we see we are in the root folder where we see the solution file. Cloud Cadets backend, that sub project. And just to verify, let's see, do we have open folder and file explorer? And we see Cloud Cadets in the desktop. And it all looks right. Good. We can keep this up here. We might have use for it. So let's start. All right. I'm not going to show you the command line approach for creating Git uh, in this, in the next one, perhaps. But for now, let's do the graphical user interface. Git up here. Create Git repository. And here we can uh, we have selected the default, we just studio here. That's nice. Uh, we don't need any license. It will create it inside the cloud cadets. And let's see what more. Then we can also push it uh, to uh, DevOps directly. We could have done this uh, directly. And uh, we could actually do it like this. The project will be inside our Cloud Cadets project. The repository name will call backend because remember we had already created the Cloud Cadets one. And uh, we can create and push. This now creates a local repository. And uh, we can verify that by typing its status. Good. And it's already connected in sync with our origin. So if we go back here, refresh. Uh, oh, right. This was the one we intentionally wanted to create, but we ended up creating this one instead. And here we have it. And just for good measure, let's remove the other one so we don't uh, get confused. And we can also remove this Cloud Cadets because its name is confusing, as it is named exactly as our project. So I'm going to delete that, copy that. And we're going to delete this one as well. Copy this. Delete. And that's just more cleaner. And we don't really need a test repo anymore. So how about we delete that one as well. 
and now we go back uh, we go to the repos and we see we only have one right now and our project is here and this is good and we also can verify we have git here where we can do those commands uh, without typing them in the console you know just keeping simple fetch push everything new branch from here and as we saw we also uh, we only have a main branch right so we might want to create a dev branch we could create it from here and we can create it from here let's try from here first let's see new branch based on main dev and that's done and we can see down here dev and there's main and we can see our remotes origin main so we know what we're doing but also we'll need to send this up the chain up to the remote so let's do a push let's see if this allows us to do that without any special commands uh, did anything happen? Any... Let's refresh and see. There we have it. Dev. Let's open this up a bit. Uh, and let's go to branches as well so it's easier to see. There we have main and dev. So you, your developers might want to work on dev uh, or create local branches based on dev and send it up to dev. Uh, and once that's done, you might merge into main. But for now, uh, let's keep it simple. This was one approach. Um, in the next approach, I'm going to show you uh, Visual Studio Code. So, until next uplink, take care.